Moving on to ASU basketball, one that hurts me so Dude, bad this because tough. this era of of Bobby Hurley at ASU basketball was so amazing. And we're going to talk about some of the best moments between those 2018 to 2020 seasons. Um, well, let's talk about the, the thing that sucked the most, though, was the NCAA tournament being canceled. Do you remember where you were on the day where the Rudy Gobert mic touch day and then everything shut down? I do. I where was actually I, I was uh, at uh, my dad's a pastor and they had this event, in this church where like people were just coming and like getting food or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we were all kind of like sitting there and, you know, kind of spaced out a little yeah. bit because you're a little bit freaked yep. out. And I pulled out my phone and I'm like, they shut the NBA down. Mm-hmm. And I remember everybody looked at me like, what? And that was just a day where you knew it was like, okay, this yep. is this is getting serious. I was on spring break. I was in California uh, with one of my best friends, and we were we had actually gone to Universal Studios the day before everything shut down. Somehow didn't get COVID from that. I hand Big touching time. handrails and everything. It was insane. You're just built different. Yeah, just built different. And I remember I was staying at a buddy of mine's place in LA, and he had just taken a nap. <laughs> And he woke up and I was like, have you seen what has oh my, just happened? He waking had, up from a nap? For three, he was like asleep for three hours. And, uh, uh, in those three hours, the NCAA tournament got canceled. The NBA shut down. Everything happened. And he was like, what are you talking about? It was one of the, it was the, quite my literally gosh. the most rude awakening you could, you could have. And, oh, man, it was – yeah, I remember when that happened. And the first thing I thought of was this Bobby Hurley-led team and, and how – how they were 20 and 11 and, 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 and about to go to the conference tournament and were on the, ber- on the brink of their third straight NCAA tournament bid, which would, would have been the first time since the early 1960s for an ASU basketball team to do. So if you think that Bobby Hurley doesn't know what he's doing, you're, you're wrong. And I still think they're feeling the effects of, of that, uh, Danielle. I think the important distinction here is that this team, that team, wasn't going in like the first four. Yeah, oh yeah. Like that was no. that was a straight up NCAA tournament. Team. Yeah, they were going to be, I think, probably a nine seed, uh, but they were going to be a dangerous nine seed. Yeah. <laughs> JJ saying, please teleport me to Circle or Studio K Brothers. Uh, yeah, I think that 2018, 2019 was the best complete team in the Hurley era. But man, this this 2019, 2020 team yeah. was something. JJ um, with some good context uh, with uh, all the other like good teams as well. With, like 2020, they had won nine to ten. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm about to get to that. Yeah. So in in the 2020 or in 2019 2020 season, at the end of the 2020 season, going into to, to conference uh, tournament play, before that, late January to through late February, they won nine of ten, including the win against U of A, where Alonzo Verge had the had the layup with ten mm-hmm. seconds to go. They were down 22 Dude. at one point in that game, uh, and and won that, and that sparked that nine of ten beating some really good, tough conference opponents. Uh, going into again the conference tournament, they had dropped three, but they were against tough opponents. I think it was UCLA, USC, and Washington. I want to say, but then they had a win going into the conference mm-hmm. tournament. Um, so uh, everything was looking like it was shaping up to be a really dangerous team, and then. I, everything shut down and again like I can't stress the fact enough like this was going to be Bobby's third straight NCAA tournament berth which is probably the most dangerous team that he's ever had going into the NCAA tournament yeah I mean and of course there's one thing we know about the NCAA tournament so the high seeds win all the time and it's always <laughs> chalk and, yeah. no th- like seriously there there was a chance with this team and if you look at a program like NC State from just this year yeah. right what it can do to kind of help catapult a program into that next level of constantly competing and getting like national eyes for a national name like Bobby Hurley. I mean, we're talking like if they go into this tournament as a nine or as a 10 seed and they make a deep run, if we're playing the what if game here, who's to say the next two, three, four, five years, they're not a perennial tournament team, not a first four. Right. And, And they're a team that continues to be dangerous. I mean, if you look at it now, the same way with football where it's like, okay, you still end up in a place where you're good. You have two five stars. You have a really good transfer class and a four star as well to pair with your five stars. Who's to say that that process doesn't get sped up a little bit if you don't have the rug pulled out from underneath you right before you're posed to go on a run on a national stage? Now, you never know, and you could be just idealizing something that wouldn't have happened, but I think the reality is, is like it could have. Yeah. And it's not a far stretch to see that team winning at least a couple games in the tournament. Yeah, the, I, I, there, there, there's a world out there. There's an alternate reality where that team gets to the Sweet 16, and yeah, and you don't know what happens after that. Uh, if 
if COVID never happens and this team makes a deep run in the tournament in 2020, you had his best recruiting class coming in the next year Mm -hmm. in 2020 to 2021. And even, even in this reality where the tournament got canceled, you could say, okay, look, sports are going to resume in November. They're going to play basketball, though restricted with guidelines and such. And you have the best recruiting. You have Josh Christopher coming in the highest rated recruit you've ever had. You have Marcus Bagley coming in. You have some returners. You, you you were ranked number 18 in the preseason poll. You think you can really get stuff going. And then that kind of the wheels kind of fell off of that mm-hmm. team. And Mickey Mitchell says in the article a really good point that I didn't really think of that much. The the guidelines really restricted Bobby because of how much how 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 much emotion he coaches with, how personal it is to him. Mm. And he couldn't sit next to players on the bench and talk to them. He had to coach with a mask on like that. That does a lot like that. That, yeah. that, that restricted you a lot. And, and I think maybe if that, does, if, if these guidelines, you know, weren't in place because the COVID never happened, it, that, that might be a different team. He might get more of Josh Christopher. He might get more of the team. Marcus Bagley might not disappear. Like yeah. <laughs> things well, can be different. And, and it even, in this article from Craig, you said Hurley not being Hurley created its own issues among them, the loss of key players such as Ramella white who transferred to Mississippi and, and Hurley kind of Mississippi state. Um, but he, he mentions that like, you're not having your normal way to communicate with yeah. people and not just in this specific situation, but at that time, the world basically went through a communication crisis yeah. where everything had to change, whether you are, no longer speaking face to face. It's mainly through text or Mm -hmm. whether when you are seeing people like if we're having a conversation right here, me and you, it's a lot different than if we're having a conversation on opposite sides of the room. And I can't see your facial features. Right. I don't know what you're conveying to me. And and Bobby, like you said, very emotional person, somebody who wears his heart on his sleeve, on his face and on his face (laughs) and, and, and somebody where he, he is very good at galvanizing his his players. Yeah. And like like we mentioned, and like you mentioned specifically, like, yes, there was a lot of turnover on this roster throughout the last couple of years. Yep. It was not because players don't like playing for Bobby no. Hurley. There was a lot of other circumstances. Yep. And I think part of that was, yeah, I really liked playing for Bobby Hurley when he could be fully Bobby Hurley. But even Bobby himself admits that that's not what he could have done. Yeah. And that just handicaps somebody who was so reliant on the emotional connection with his players. And it puts you in a place where you probably don't even realize it in the moment because you're just in survival mode. You're in, let me get through this. Let me make the most of it. But now that you're on the other side of it and you're looking at what it was, you start thinking about, well, what it could have been if I didn't have to adhere to those different sets of circumstances and those restrictions, you know, Mm -hmm. and especially coming off again, your momentum being killed from the season before and having returners. It wasn't just, you have, a top 10 recruiting class coming in with your best recruit of all time. You've got really good players coming yep. back as well. And not having that momentum to end the season, it, it rolls into the next one, whether mm. you want to admit it or not, like that all plays a role. It's all linked together more than I think people would like to admit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember the start of that game or the start of that season in the Mohegan sun tournament they played in when they played Rhode Island and, and beat them in a close game uh, with uh, um, Josh Christopher having a really good game. You're like, oh, my God, this team can be really good. Mm-hmm. And then they competed a little bit with Villanova that next game. And then, you know, the wheels kind of fell off a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you finish 11 and 14. You don't make the tournament. Uh, you, you get blown out in the Pac-12 tournament to Oregon. And, and then, you know, you lose a lot of momentum. And then the – NIL and transfer portal gets crazy and you're already behind again. Like if this, if this program had kept the momentum from 2020 going into 2021 and, and had a great season under what should have been one of Bobby Hurley's best teams, Mm -hmm. things are probably different nowadays, but you look at what he he's done since then. He has the number four recruiting class in the nation. Right. But he didn't sit back. Woe is me. He didn't pout. He changed and he adapted. And that's something we touched on yesterday. That's something we touched on on Friday. Like it's it's a big it's a big thing that that your head coach you know it has weathered this storm and it looks like you're sailing out the other side and you see clear skies and you're ready to go. I again. mean, it, it's a it's a massive massive kudos to to yeah. Bobby. And again. It makes you think, well, what if he didn't have 
that to overcome. Yeah, Because exactly. not, not only is that great for your on-court product, if you end up making it a tournament, let's say you win a game or two, right? You just keep that momentum yeah. going. Then you come back, you have more financial investment, even though you're not in the NIL era fully yet. Maybe you're looking at better facilities. Yeah. Maybe you're looking at better ways to take care of your players, right? Oh, now we have top players coming in. Let's capitalize on that a little mm -hmm. bit more than how we did. Now you're entering the NIL era with way more people ready to line your pockets and help you out, right? Yep. And possibly even a Bobby Hurley who he's always trying his best, but even admitted that moving to the Big 12 and having so much change kind of reinvigorated him. Well, maybe he would have stayed like on that top level that we know Bobby yep. could hit right off the bat, throwing his name around for NIL, and now you're entering this era ahead of it instead of adjusting. And you have to give the congratulations and the kudos to adjusting and figuring out what to do. But at the end of the day, if he didn't have to do that and he was already on top of it, you're talking about getting a head start for somebody that we have seen already pull in an incredible yeah. recruiting class in very tough circumstances. Yeah, it, it, should, be, it should be really exciting going into, going into this year, as he mentioned in... One of Craig's other articles, he feels rejuvenated. It feels like a new start, a uh, fresh start. And what better time than right now to to be bought into ASU basketball going into the Big 12? Because that not only does that bring better competition, it also brings more eyes, which means more money, which means a better roster consistently. Um, and I think you're going to expect bigger and better things year after year for ASU basketball. And I think that starts this year. So uh, it, it's exciting. Again, I... You'd never know where we'd be right now if that never happened because there was a ton of momentum and it got killed. But they're ahead of what ASU football is on, and they're 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 yeah. they're they fast tracked it a little bit.